What's up guys, Jake Corley here with Digital Wildcatters. Back in 2018, we dropped our very first YouTube video. We went up to Oklahoma in Pawnee and Creek County. We had big dreams of being oil men. So we actually looked at some oil wells that we ended up purchasing. And so we vlogged the entire experience. This was really the beginning of Digital Wildcatters. Digital Wildcatters was just the name of our YouTube channel back then. We got a lot of really great feedback. People said, hey, this is amazing. We want to do more content like this. We actually ended up making a follow-up vlog, actually walking through our first work over one of the wells, changing out one of the sub pumps. People said, hey, why'd you guys stop making, uh, why, why'd you stop making video of the, the wells? Well, it's because we sold them. Oil prices weren't very good back then and we were losing a ton of money. So that was the smartest decision for us. However, we always wanted to create more content like that. And so about six months ago, we had Will Ulrich from Presidio Petroleum on the Oil and Gas Service podcast telling the story of how they've built a really, really amazing organization there. And he was like, I would love to document what we're doing. I would love to give you guys access, just full access to the office, to the field, to the ranch and everything. And so that's exactly what we did. So we embedded a videographer there in Fort Worth to follow these guys around and showcase what it really takes to build a modern energy company. So we're super excited for this series. Welcome to The Outsiders. I think one of the constant themes that you'll hear from me is I think in individual examples, you can point to companies that had theses and that executed during these time periods. And this is a very volatile industry. It's a volatile business. And we need to be prepared to have a thesis, to execute under that thesis over long periods of time to generate capital returns. We felt like the drilling side of the business, while it advertised great returns, we had been part of companies that had done that for a long time and the returns really weren't that good. Um, they weren't as advertised. And our business model, we felt like, could compete with those returns and do it on a low risk basis to where our business model isn't contingent upon the next well hitting or missing. Our business model is contingent upon buying something right, operating it better and controlling margin, which are all very controllable things. So Daniel came to us through the field. Uh, so we hired a field superintendent. When we bought the Mid-States assets, we had taken on a portion of their employees and we knew we wanted one of our guys up there in the field uh, as well. And so we hired one of our field superintendents. He was from the Panhandle and we hired him away from Jones Energy. And when he came to us, he recommended, he said, I had this great engineer in Austin that I worked for, this guy, Daniel Braxton, you guys should go hire him. And so Chris and I were building out our team and, and the way we built our team was we wanted to put together a eclectic and diverse group of individuals who think differently than other people in the oil and gas business, who may look different than other people in the oil and gas business, who maybe have a different path than other people had in the oil and gas business to really bring a unique set of decision making and a unique set of skills into the company. And so when we thought about building out kind of the core executive team after buying the Mid-States assets, we were looking for somebody like Daniel, and at the time, really, we were looking for a corporate development engineer. So we needed somebody who was gonna underwrite the acquisitions that we were gonna go buy. After the first acquisition that we made after I joined the company, we went to the field office and actually interviewed probably 100 people. We interviewed Shea Province in Canadian, Texas. It was after the Apache acquisition. So Shea coming from the field and then being promoted to engineer because of his talent, and, I, and actually, I think that speaks a lot to Presidio and kind of the people we hire, is that, we didn't hire necessarily someone with the right pedigree, background. It was after we met him and it was very quick, it was very obvious that he was going to be extremely valuable, that he knew a lot, he was versatile, and he brought the kind of energy that we're looking for in an engineer. And really we think of our engineers as kind of just managers for the most part. There's a lot of technical work to be done, but because we're not doing a lot of the drilling and exploring that a lot of companies do, a lot of the technical challenges are pretty well understood. And so at that point, that the role is really a management role. Hi, I'm Shea Province. I'm with Presidio Petroleum. I'm an asset manager, and we're up here in the beautiful Texas Panhandle with the heat and the wind just outside of Perryton, Texas. We've got well reviews coming up this week, and we just finished up an OAP project over by Gage, Oklahoma. So what are well reviews and what do we hope to gain? You know, it's really just a great time for all of us to get together from 
engineers and techs and foremen and the lease operators, we do these twice a year. We can sit down, we can look through every well, one at a time, look at production, look at expenses coming in, revenue streams, work over history, and just make sure everything's at peak performance. Probably one of the ever-changing things is lime pressure. We can't always control midstream lime pressure. It always affects the way wells are producing. So we're constantly changing, adding compressors here to help buck lime pressure or changing plunger settings to make sure they stay running. Coming down here gives us a good chance to really see the communication link that we have together, if it's working, if we need to change anything, anything we can do to make these wells produce better. All right, it's getting hot out here. Let's go to well reviews. A production tech and just keep wells producing at their best. Rod pumps quit pumping. You gotta troubleshoot and see why they quit pumping. Plungers quit running. You gotta see why they quit running. Pretty much, it's just keeping everything up and going. It's something that needs to be fixed. Yeah, there's gonna be a tank swap there. Where a knuckle boom, a big truck comes and loads up the old tank. The very bottom of the tank has rotted out, corroded out from produced water it ate through the tank, so we have to get another one and swap it out. Are these any type of issues that y'all would bring up in well reviews? Yeah, on these smaller producing wells, you don't have much income from, let's say, a small plunger well that don't make much. So we have to bring that up and get it approved before we can just swap a tank from somewhere else because there's a lot of costs that go into it. Today we have a 25 year old vertical well with a 40 foot sandstone. The original perfs, the uh, take points into our well are about 20 foot in the middle of that 40 foot zone. What we're about to do is shoot a 15 foot gun on the bottom and 15 foot gun on the top. So over perfing about 10 feet of the original 20 feet of perfs and then adding 20 feet of additional perfs in the pay zone. Typically your only problem is gonna be trying to tie into your previous perfs, make sure you're on depth where you wanna shoot. We have a couple of different ways we can combat that. We're hoping to add, in this instance, is adding the additional pay, hopefully improving the performance of the well. Either way, we're, we've repaired our hole in tubing, so we expect to return this well to its previous trend. We're hoping with the additional pay zones that we're adding, the perfs, that will improve, get some uplift out of it. So pending results on this well and one or two others we plan on doing in the next week, We'll look to expand this project across the play to include all the uh, wells where this possibility exists. So I've got one of the interns this summer. He's actually pumping the wells on our ranch and, and the surrounding wells. Omar, he's, he's doing a great job. He's been on it for about two weeks. I think he feels like he's drinking from a fire hose. At the end of the two months, he'll, he'll have it down pat and about the time he figures it out, he'll be going back to school. So Omar's gonna be in well reviews this afternoon. It's gonna give him a really good opportunity to, to get the perception of what this looks like from being a pumper and also maybe his future path forward as a, as a production engineer if he goes that direction. My name is Omar Carrillo. I'm currently a Presidio intern. I go to school at Midwestern State University. I'm studying geoscience with a minor in petroleum engineering. My goal after I graduate is to hopefully land an engineering job somewhere. My day to day kind of looks like start pumping around 6.30, uh, checking each well, spending roughly 15, 20 minutes at each one. I gauge tanks to see how much water, how much gas we produced, how much oil we produced, and just seeing if there's anything that I can change on any of the wells to help them produce better. I assume that the oil field is a bunch of dudes just barking orders at you, but uh, Presidio, the employees here really take the time to sit down and to teach you what you need to know, and they don't get frustrated, they don't get impatient. They're there to help you out. So I was lucky enough to grow up here in the Texas Panhandle on a little ranch in Lipscomb County. It actually sets right in the middle of the area that I kind of operate. It's been in my family now for six generations. It was a really fun place to grow up. So my family's lucky enough to have a few wells on the ranch. And in fact, they're Presidio wells or a, a small portion of them are. It's been a blessing to see my parents get to the age that they can retire and have these wells come in and, and collect a little bit of that mailbox money. So when we're not doing well reviews, we've got a, a few things I've got to take care of at the ranch. The work on a ranch is never done. 
I've got an old car that we're trying to get running. So I need to check cows, check on water and just, you know, normal rat killing that happens on the ranch. So here we are, end of day one. We've got most of our projects knocked out. We've got the bed on feed truck put on. Of course, when, when we're working out here, everyone tends to show up and lend a hand. My dad, my uncle, my little cousin. So we got that all knocked out. Got the Mustang running, new fuel tank put in. One four-wheeler was down, we got it fixed. It had a bad relay. This green four-wheeler, we're still churning on it. For some reason, fuel won't pick up, but we'll get it figured out tomorrow. Now that we've worked through the hottest part of the day, I think it's cool enough now, we'll, we'll head out and see if we can play a little bit. All right, so we're here at the range. We call this the pistol pit. We've got barricades set up. I don't know, probably 30 targets in here. So we'll just uh, run through and try to knock the dust off a little bit. Before the oil field, I was a shooting instructor. Got a long range course up there to the east. And then we had the shooting pit right here in a KD range right behind us. This is just kind of the remnants of a bygone era. Man, it was, it was a fun time. Got to do some cool things in my 20s and uh, moved on to making money now. Built all of the ranges. The, the rifle range up there, pushed all this up with a backhoe. I think it took two weeks. I should have just got a dozer, but we got it done. And Canadian replaced the turf on their football fields. So we've got a little bit of the turf out here. All the weeds are growing up through it now, but it still uh, keeps the stickers away. Good morning, this is day two. Oh, we're heading back out to the first well site we were on yesterday. Uh, yesterday we got two wells per for that first well we we're planning on putting two shots on it before we could get that second shot we discovered we left our guns in the hole from the first run we got that fished out though and got things ready to go for first thing this morning getting a run in and we're heading that way now so we're up and at them bright and early this morning early bird gets to warm and it's uh it's time to get after it Came out, looks like Pop goes the weasel. We got them all shot. That's good news. We got wireline rigging down. The hydro testers rigging up. We'll be hydro testing this tube and back in the hole today. Should be landed this afternoon. Swab on it. Find out what we got later tonight. Okay, well, I'll let Bill work that out with Kyle, but we'll have you back out there and we'll find some fluid to flush down it and we'll try that and then take a gun with you. And if we can't get it fished, then we'll shoot it. Yeah, so uh, while well, they were on, oh, a couple weeks ago, they dropped a plunger five days ago and they produced some metal shavings and went down and tried to grab the plunger today. Couldn't get it when they ran a magnet, got some metal shavings out. We're experimenting right now with how to fix it. We might not, we might just live with it, but before we decide to live with it, we're gonna give it one more attempt to get it out. All right, so we've just landed the tubing here. We've got the wellhead screwed in to the top of the tubing string. And they're fixing to lower it down and we'll bolt the wellhead back together and be ready to produce. My name is Oscar Palenzuela. I'm working for Western Hard Oil and I've been doing this for 13 years. I like to be part of this company because I'm learning a lot of things on the well site. This pump, you can treat oil, you can load and pressure out tubing on location. And I'm enjoying doing this for 30 years. We got a fun sometimes, like right now we're cooking on location and we got a pretty good friendship with everybody, take care of each one, try to be safe and come back together with families. We got pretty good safety meetings and videos. And I saw that it's kind of dangerous being here. But like I said, with that training we got and the, the co-workers, we make teamwork and we avoid to get th that kind of issues because we got a teamwork. Every day, it depends where uh, we're working, but most of the time, we wake up at four in the morning, get ready with my truck and be on location at seven, 6.30, and you never know, we come back. It depends how the well reaction, could be late, could be next day, but we, like I say, we like to be on lo locations. I want to say thank you very much to be on location and share these kind of videos 
because our families, our friends, they didn't know nothing about what we do in, in all fields and location. And this is gonna help those guys to know what we are doing for them. You know what I mean?